Hello the there, neighborinos. So, Dominic Mellinson, the head of R&D at PlayStation, sat down with CNET to talk about what we can expect out of the next edition of the PlayStation VR. If the recent patent filings are anything to, to go by, then a lot of these... Well, a lot of these we can expect. First, there's wireless, eye tracking, controllers, pass-through, and, well, just because of how recent it was, we likely won't see one alongside the PlayStation 5 when it launches next November. So, first things first, we do still have to touch, we have to touch on the idea of a wireless PlayStation 5 virtual reality headset. So, he, he says, quote, the PlayStation VR needs to evolve. It's not quite yet as a, there as a mass market proposition. And they do want it to be a lighter weight, easier to put on, less cables, and less mess. And like I said, if the recent patent filings are anything to go by, Wireless, it's likely to be coming. And again, don't expect it to be coming when the PS5 launches in November, but rather a year, maybe two, down the pipeline. And then we do, we do have eye tracking. That would allow for foveated rendering where a lot of the graphical processing power is going to be focused on where your pupils are giving you a much more immersive, well, a, a far more immersive field of view and a more efficient use of the processing power. So, it does seem to be heading in that direction and Mallinson is in fact quoted as saying, for me, it's a pretty obvious technology. So that is something we can we can expect rolling forward. And then we also have new the idea of new controllers. So at the moment I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the move controllers are rather old. In fact, they're the same move controllers that we've been seeing since the PlayStation 3 was on the shelves. That being said, he is also quoted as saying, we recognize that it needs to be involved, and in the future we will obviously replace it. And my next story of the day is going to actually touch on something like that. But for now, let's just finish one story at a time, right? So, there is something that we can kind of expect, but rather, well, temper our expectations on. And that is the idea of pass-through, in much the same way that the Oculus Quest does, where you're able to see the real world for however long, and you're able to interact with it while you have the headset on. but don't really expect anything along the lines of what Magic Leap and HoloLens are working on for a more immersive augmented reality experience. And on top of that, I, I know I've hammered on this time and time again, but don't expect this to launch next November. We just had the patent filing. It's going to take some time for development. And they still got to send out dev kits and game development. So, yeah. <coughs> the new PlayStation VR will be PS5 compatible. However, you could probably expect it to come maybe a year or two or three down the pipeline. But 
not in November. Just wa watch your expectations there. That's that's really all I got to say. In fact, he's also quoted in saying, in some ways, it's good to have a little breathing space between those things. So, yeah, like I said, don't don't get your expectations up. Don't get your hopes up there. But that being said, uh, even though the audience is smaller, and Sony is working on growing the audience, developers understand that virtual reality is heading in the right direction. We are, in fact, going to see growth and better games and just about everything we want to see out of the next virtual reality headset. The next thing that we do have something to look forward to is Sony has just recently filed a patent for gloves in, in virtual reality. These gloves would allow further immersiveness in in whatever environment they're being used in, you would be able to feel whatever you're touching. You'd be able to feel vibrations. Well, you you would feel as if you're holding, touching, doing whatever in this environment using these gloves. As far as how it would work, I don't know. And I'm not really in a place to make that judgment. But one thing we can say for sure is that placed is that Sony and surely PlayStation are making moves to try to further enhance the con the cons the end consumer's use of their virtual reality products. Okay, so this next story is a doozy. So, the World Health Organization has officially approved classifying video game addiction as a disease in a unanimous vote. And it will be officially added into the revisions of the International Classification of Diseases starting January 1st, 2022. They initially set up this vote about a year ago, but they just finally made the revision and the classification official. Although the ESA did try to fight them on it, the Electronic Software Association, they did, the World Health Organization, in fact, decided to follow through with their vote. In, in the context of video game addiction, the disease disease itself would be categorized by a few notable details. One, impaired control over gaming, whether it's onset, frequency, intensity, duration, termination, context, and anything along those lines. If, if you so much as, I, I don't know, make a new goal within a game after you immediately finish one. Like say, you try to upgrade your horse even more in Red Dead Online or something, or you, you try to upgrade a plane in GTA 5. I, I, I don't know what you're doing. But if, if, you, if you push yourself further beyond where you're going, that could be considered impaired control. Next up, number two, we have increased priority given to gaming to the extent that it takes precedence over other life extent interests and daily activities. This part, yeah, I, I kind of get where they're coming from, because you still need to be able to eat, drink, and, well, shower, obviously. Showering is kind of a, a, an important thing, I think, but... I, I guess some people can consider Fortnite a little bit more important than taking a shower. But that's up to them. And number three, the other characteristic is con is the continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative, consequence, co negative consequences. 
the behavior pattern is sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. So in other words, if assuming you would continue despite losing relationships, be it at work, school, or, well, just simply personally. If yeah. video games do come in the way of that, it kind of fall as much as it pains me to actually say it, it actually makes sense when, when you go through and consider what each of those mean. It, well, it, it makes sense. If you're going to focus more on a game despite negative consequences, known negative consequences, it's, well, it kind of reminds me of heroin. But, It is a very well regarded metric and other medical professionals use to assess patients, diagnoses, and all, all sorts of fun stuff like that. But depending on how broad they decide to make those characteristics, that that could spell out that, that could say that all of us are diseased by simply playing video games. So, I guess it would be up, up to the doctor that you're talking to in that regard. If you guys are still here, come back tomorrow where I'll be talking all about a tariff that could potentially raise the price of the PlayStation 5 when it launches by up to as much as 25%. I believe that's a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.